Yeah, I'm uh, more than happy to talk black holes and astronomy. I've got about an hour and then I've got another meeting just after eight. Um, but um, I'm more than happy to talk as much as you'd like about um, anything black hole or astronomy related. Um, what, what would be good to talk about? Oh, man, it's just the 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 advancements that have been made, you know, as far as the, you know, taking, getting the photo of the, the shadow, you know, of the black hole using the event horizon telescope. Oh, yeah. That, that whole um, endeavor there just really blows my mind. And, you know, just to, to think a little over a hundred years ago, you know, it was, we had no idea, even though in Einstein's work, they were predicted, but within no, that time span, we have, we actually have pictures of, well, I think they call it the shadow. I, I know it's not the actual black hole, but it casts the shadow. So my first question would be, is in, in your work, is the black hole physically something? Because I hear a lot of people say it's a phenomenon or it's a hole in space. But then I hear about rogue black holes, you know, black holes that are moving across the solar, I mean, are moving across the galaxy in, you know, the Milky Way galaxy. So is it something physical or is it just a gravitational phenomenon, of, you know, based off of your work? In, in how you approach it? Oh, that's that's a deep question. Um, the short answer would be, it is something real. But the long answer would be, no one really has a good idea of what that real thing is. So I'm going to give a fairly long-winded answer to this. I do apologize. Um, um, when Einstein first dreamt up general relativity, um, the first, what people call black hole solution, or no, no uh, let me rephrase that. The first solutions to the theory, um, they admitted the possibility, and I, I'm picking my words really carefully here, they admitted the possibility that there existed objects where something seemingly impossible happened when those objects got incredibly dense. Um, and there's a, there's a famous, well, in astronomer land, there's a famous set of letters back and forth between Einstein and another physicist called Karl Schwarzschild where Schwarzschild said, hey, Einstein, I've got this solution to your equations. And Einstein wrote back and said, well, that can't be right, because if you go, if you make the radius smaller than this number, you get infinities and really weird behavior, so something must be wrong. And this all remained, you know, these objects remained completely theoretical. No one outside of theoretical ast astrophysics really cared about them. Um, they came to be called black holes, but the, the name black hole is actually older than Einstein. It, it goes back to sometime in the 18th century um, for a sort of slightly different sort of object. But the, the sort of the key thing is that they remained completely theoretical ideas that no one really cared about because whenever astronomers actually looked at the sky, they never found anything that looked anything like these objects would look. And because these objects were predicted to be uh, what's called extremely relativistic objects, that is, they uh, have all these sort of weird and wonderful features like, um, like time slowing down, relatively right beside them. And when astronomers looked up at the sky, they saw nothing like this. That was 
until round about 1962, when astronomers found a real object um, which was producing ridiculous amounts of energy from a very, very, very small region of the sky. And it's a, an object that it has a very boring name. It's called Cygnus X1. Uh, Cygnus, the constellation, X is means X-ray source, and 1 means the first X-ray source. So the name basically means the first source of X-rays found in this patch of the sky. Um, the, the, the reasons for this would take a little while to go into. I'm happy to do that if you'd like. But the upshot of this discovery was that Astronomers could not think of any objects that would produce this much energy from this smaller part of the sky. The only object that would do it was this theoretical object called a black hole that Schwarzschild and others had proposed exists. The issue with that, though, was back then and still is now that black holes within general relativity are fraught with issues um they have a divide they have an infinity in the middle where you have the theory says you have a divide by zero which is basically mathematics saying something's broken down um within a certain distance you can have things called closed time-like curves which basically means you can have time travel um, only within a certain distance, but you can do it. Um, and you also have an event horizon, which again is a kind of an infinity. And in physics, infinities are generally signs that something's not right with your theory. And so there was this sort of tension back then, and there still is a tension now, that observations demand that objects that, at least on the outside, look like black holes, those things must exist. I mean, the evidence for them is overwhelmingly strong now. Um, the Event Horizon Telescope is one, but there's evidence from a whole bunch of other sources that says these things must exist. But the theory kind of says, well, we've got a really good description of these things. Um, the description that's currently used now is called the Kerr solution. But that description doesn't really work like it, it works in some ways it gives you a really good description of the outsides but as soon as you go inside them everything goes to hell and so the the sort of the consensus view these days would be well these objects must exist they are real but we don't really yet have a good theoretical description for what they are we have a theoretical description but it's not a very good one. And so they remain very mysterious objects. Um, the fact that we don't yet understand them, though, means that studying them is a really good thing to do, because if we study them and actually understand how they work, that might reveal new insights into the, the nature of physics itself that says, OK, this is actually how physics works. Um, and so they're a very, very hot topic of study. Uh, but I have to say, I, I personally do not know what they are. I mean, I'm trying to work out what they are, but I don't know. Well, that's the the good thing about it. I mean, that, that leads to, in my opinion, um, you know, the, the things for the next generation to come along and, and you know, use the word